there's different strokes for different folks and every dog isn't the same and sometimes you may have to alter things for your dog to make sure that they're getting everything that they needed but to also not only think about what you're feeding the dog as a pup but think about as that dog gets older as it reaches a year two three year mark and essentially what it started eating as a pup it now requires double or maybe even triple the amount to keep that dog going so when you consider something like a raw dog diet that is uh not the most cost effective thing um but it can be worth it you gotta think about, hey, as a pup, they may not eat that much, but as a grown dog, they may eat three, four of that amount. So what can I sustain long-term for this dog's health? Yo, what up, peeps? It's yours truly, Kelvin DeVoe from Devoted Kennels KD on YouTube. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. I would greatly appreciate that. So we make sure that we are helping out as many people as possible. And today, what we're going to be doing is y'all gonna come along with me as I prepare Kino's food. And before I begin, I wanna say shout out to my dog, PA. I'll put his social somewhere up here. Um, but he is someone that we had a conversation today and we were talking about what goes into feeding these dogs that cost so much. And one thing, you know, we talked about kibble, we talked about raw, we talked about semi-moist food. And basically what I learned from him today was that there's different strokes for different folks. And every dog isn't the same. And sometimes you may have to alter things for your dog to make sure that they're getting everything that they needed. But to also not only think about what you're feeding the dog as a pup, but think about as that dog gets older, as it reaches a year, two, three year mark, and essentially what it started eating as a pup, it now requires double or maybe even triple the amount to keep that dog going. So when you consider something like a raw dog diet that is uh, not the most cost effective thing, um, but it can be worth it. You gotta think about, hey, as a pup, they may not eat that much, but as a grown dog, they may eat three, four of that amount. So what can I sustain long-term for this dog's health? So we're gonna talk about some things that I'm gonna do, uh, but just realize that this is what I'm doing for my dog. And I encourage you to do the absolute best that you can for your dog. The best that you can do is the best that you can do. And no one can debate that, but you have to ask yourself, are you giving your dog the best option, the best choices in life to make sure that they have a good, healthy upbringing? And if so, keep going. If not, figure out some things that you can do. But I do want to say that um, there is really no one size fits all. You have to figure out what works for you and you roll with that. So back to my conversation uh, that I had with PA and we talked about what is the dog eating? What's sustainable? Why am I eating? the dog the way that I am. And one thing that me and Pat talked about today is that you wanna feed your dog the best, but you also wanna make sure that that dog is not taking you on a run for your money, literally, and making sure that, yeah, you're doing the best that you can, but you're also not going broke to make sure that a dog eats, because a dog is a dog. No matter how much you invest it into them, the dog is a dog. Hey, you wanna get out of there? Hey, leave it, leave it. Um, so today, I'm gonna show y'all what I put into Kino's food and why I do it the way that I do it. So, one thing you have to learn when it comes to dogs, I was always brought up on dog food. We go to the grocery store, we get the biggest bang for our buck. We get the biggest bag of dog food for the least amount of money and that's what that dog gonna eat. Now, Kino is a different dog, a lot different than a lot of other dogs that I've had because of his price tag on him. So, I can't necessarily go to the grocery store and get those same bags of dog food that I used to when I was young. So now that's when I started looking at what are some options that I can feed this dog because I want him to live healthy, I want him to live happy, um, and I want to make sure that he gets everything that he needs. So as I'm going along this journey of researching different options and different diets that I can feed my dog, I'm noticing there's a difference in things that you can feed your dog. There's kibble, which is dry dog food, which a lot of people know about. There is semi-moist food, which we have here. I'll explain more about what that is, what that looks like. You have a raw dog food diet, right? You have a wet dog food diet, 
and you also have a prey dog food diet. A prey dog food diet is basically where you give dogs uh, dead quail, dead rabbits, dead anything that's still whole that people can freeze, and you give that to your dog. Uh, but today, I'm going to stick within the realm of what I'm doing and how I feed Keno, I'm not even sure how it would be classified, um, but it's sort of like a gambit of all of those things except for the prey. And I may delve into that later, but as of now, I'm going to stick with what I have going. But with Keno, I have found a really good kibble that has taurine in it, that has uh, not just chicken flavor, but it has chicken in it. It doesn't have chicken meal, it has chicken. It has liver in it, it has beef. Um, it has whole things in it. So this is a really good kibble brand that I have, and it's called Value Pack. It's the black bag, other bully owners swear by it as well. So, I like to start with a cup of kibble. His dog food is based in kibble because this kibble is essentially the complete meal of everything that you need. God, dog boy, stop it. Leave it. <laughs> All right, y'all, we back. Um, but this kibble has everything uh, that essentially the dog needs to grow. Now, it may not have as much as I would want it to have. It may have a little less. So, as I was saying, <laughs> Kino's dog food diet is based in kibble. That means that 85% of what I give him is based in this dog food. Now, the thing about kibble, dry dog food perhaps, is that it is extremely processed. So you gotta think about what would be equivalent to kibble for humans. That would be things like Hungry Man dinners. Uh, that would be things that you find in the frozen food section that's highly processed, has a lot of things in it. Yes, you can still sustain yourself and eat and maybe even grow, uh, but if you're someone that was an athlete or ex athlete like I am, um, then you know that there are better ways to eat than just processed food and just going to McDonald's every day or just getting things out of the freezer section to eat. So even though it's based in this because, let's, let's face it, this is a really good thing to start them off on and to keep them maintained because it doesn't break the bank and it still gives them the essential things that they need to grow. So if I only gave him this kibble from this brand, this would be enough he would still grow up to be a happy pup. But because I am learning and I'm wanting to do better for him, I'm looking at some other options. So one thing that I found and here's something else that won't break the bank that you can add into your dog food is egg. And with egg, they can have the egg, the egg shell, the egg white, uh, the egg mama, egg daddy, anything, <laughs> anything surrounding this egg, they can have. So I make sure that I put the egg, the egg shells in there. If we cook a, you know, scrambled egg or whatever, make sure we save it and that's what you see now. Another thing that won't break the bank, all of your fruit that goes spoiled and go bad before you throw it out, Make sure that you put it in the freezer or the refrigerator and save it and incorporate that into your dog. So the reason why I give him kibble is because essentially everything he needs to grow is in that. The reason why I give him egg, egg shells because it has protein. It has things that can uh, give him calcium, things that can go into his bones and strengthen them up. The reason why we give him bananas is for potassium. You know, everyone needs that to grow. So. I'll cut this in a few simple slices. Now, I take the banana uh, outer layer off. Um, I've seen people leave it on. I don't really care to leave it on. You do what fits you. And I also cut this up a bit as well. And he doesn't need a lot of bananas, just a couple. Um, I'm gonna pick this out. Ha. Okay, cool. After that, I have some carrots. Now, carrots are good because they provide fiber. Carrots provide fiber to your dog, which means that when you're eating all that beef and all of that stuff that you're gonna give him uh, from the dog food or from the raw dog food that you're gonna put in, the carrots are gonna make, make sure that all, sure that all those things pass through him successfully. So, I like to cut up carrots. 
add these carrots in. Next, I will add in some sardines. Add in, added in sardines to your dog's meal. Gives them that fish oil. For all of you that don't know, fish oil is how dogs keep their coat shiny. Um, and it also helps with their uh, inner workings as well. So I mix in a little sardines, a couple scoops of that. From there, excuse me, I have a semi-moist pack that I got from the grocery store. And this semi, uh, this semi-moist dog food, as you can see here, it has chicken, beef, salmon, and egg recipe. Now I gave him the egg shells. Um, now they may have put in the egg white, they may have put in the yolk. Um, but it has egg in this as well. As you can see also, it has maybe a few carrots, a few blueberries, it has some greens in there. I think it said it had maybe celery or broccoli in there as well. So they only need about a fourth of this. So they need about one slice of this per day. So because I already have kibble that this is based in, I go ahead and I section this off. From there, take it out. And he only need half for this meal. So I'm feeding him twice a day. And so for this meal, I like to put it up in small chunks. Uh, Kino is only three months old right now. He's not, you know, necessarily the biggest dog. So I didn't want him chewing things the size of his head. So making sure that I'm getting these up. They don't have to be super fine, but just make sure that, you know, they can be bite size like chicken nuggets for him. So he has his kibble. He has his semi-moist food that has beef, has chicken, has salmon. I gave him some tuna. I gave him some bananas, some carrots, uh, eggshells. And the last thing that I'm gonna add because he's a pup is some of this down. Now, Don is used to give dogs, um, for one, a flavor that if you are switching their dog food, if you want them to eat something else, this gives them like a, I believe, a vanilla flavor. Uh, this is going to entice them to eat, but it also packs on a few more calories than they would normally get um, so that they kind of bulk up. Uh, so this is something that you can add into your dog. You know, you don't need a lot. I think it's about a tablespoon for, for his weight right now. Now, I was almost out, so he's just gonna get the rest of this. And honestly, it's really all around a, a tablespoon. So, I got the dime, the semi-moist, the carrots, the bananas, the eggshells, the kibble, the sardines, the carrots. And now I'm ready to be my pup, and I'm gonna let y'all see it. And I'm gonna let y'all see it. Look at that. Look at that. If it ain't had no dog food in there, I might eat it. So guys, you see, in Kino's dog food, I have carrots, I have eggshells, I have semi-moist dog food, which comes in like a packet similar to what ground beef or ground turkey comes in. And that has bison meat, it has chicken, it has beef, it has salmon, it has celery, it has chicken liver, it has blueberries, carrots in it. Um, maybe, a, I think a little broccoli as well. I have this dog food. I have some bananas that were turning too old for me to eat, but I put some bananas, a couple slices of bananas in there. I have some sardines mixed in there. And this is what I feel like is sustainable for me to feed my dog, to base it in kibble, and then to add in some other things that the kibble may not give him as much of, which is what I would want him to have, which is other vitamins, other ways to get fats, other ways to get uh, fish oils, things like that. So I'm gonna show you how he loves this mix up. Wait, 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 eat.
So guys, uh, that's one way that you can feed your dog. You can get the best brand of kibble that you believe in, dry dog food, and then what you can do is you can supplement some other things that may not be in that or that there are other things that you want them to have to help out with things like their digestive health, um, their skin, their coat, if, they are, if you're noticing that they're having any allergies, you can add in other things that the kibble may not have. Um, and it's, it's just supplementing things that aren't in there. So I hope that this helps you all think about something. Like I said, you don't have to feed him what I'm feeding him. Um, feed your dog what I'm feeding Kino. You can find out what works for you and how you want your dog to look overall and long term. So this has been a lunch session with me and Kino. Um, and so I hope you guys grab, got something from it. Remember to like, share, subscribe. We have a lot more content coming here soon. And um, we look forward to growing with you all. So like, share, subscribe. Let your friends, friends, and friends know what we got going on. Um, and we look forward to seeing y'all too. Say later, buddy. Okay.